Now, going back to our reference, you can see that there's a support brace back here that's curved, and it's the same curve as the seat itself. So we can reuse the spline curve that we created before. We don't have to build it all over again. So I'm going to go back into my sub-object modes. I'll go into sub-object segment, and I can turn off show end result once again. And I'm just going to select these segments here, not the front segment, because I don't need to duplicate that. We look at our reference once again. That's a separate piece that's a little bit higher up here. So I'm just going to duplicate this part of the model. Okay, I'm in segment mode and I've selected all the segments except for the front one. And I'm going to scroll through my geometry rollout. Okay, geometry rollout. Scrolling way, way down at the very, almost near the bottom, you will see detach. But before you click the detach button, you want to enable the option to make a copy so that this will be split off to a completely different object. Okay, so I'm going to click the detach button and I've got a little dialogue coming up asking me what I want this new object to be named. And I'll just call it chair sweep because I know that I'm going to apply a sweep modifier to it later. Click OK and now I've got a new object in the scene. I can exit out of sub-object mode once again and I can go back up to the top level so we can see the extrude and I can click and drag to move. Let's right click and move and you'll see I'm able to move that up and down to kind of get it out of the way. But that's kind of funny because we've already placed it at the elevation that we want. So I'm going to press Control Z and put it back. And what I want to do is select the new spline that I've made and move it down a little bit. But sometimes it's really hard to select things in the viewport. You know, you can click here and sometimes it'll select the right object and sometimes it won't. Right now I got lucky this time and it's actually selected it. Um, and I can right click and then move that selection down. But um, sometimes you'll need to use the select by name dialog. So you can just press the H key on your keyboard and you'll get a dialog coming up that lists all of the objects in your scene and you can select and press OK. So that's if you're having trouble selecting things in the view. Okay, cool. So I've got another curve now that's going to be a few inches below. We can adjust that in the front view as well. And what I want to do here is put a sweep modifier on this so that we'll have this shape that's shown in our reference image. All right, so back in our modifier list for this new curve. I'm going to scroll down and I'm looking for sweep. Okay, there it is, sweep. Now as soon as I add that, I get something. Okay, if we look at this in the perspective view, you'll see, okay, we've got this angle bracket. So what sweep does is it takes the curve and then projects a profile along that curve to create the surface. And we've got all these built-in sections or profiles that we can choose from. All we need here is just a simple bar. Okay, so that's obviously too thick, but then once we've set the section type, we can then scroll down here and change some other parameters like the length and width. I only need an inch in each direction, so I'll type in a 1 and press tab, type in a 1 and press enter, and we're pretty close, we're not quite there yet. You'll notice that it's actually a little bit larger than the seat. So we get this back up again, move this back up. You can see that it's too big, it needs to be smaller. And that's where the offsets come in handy. So I've got an X and a Y offset here. So if I click and hold the spinner down and move it, you can see I can adjust that offset value interactively. And it looks like it wants to be about a half an inch. Well, that makes sense because the bar is one inch from end to end. So I'm going to just type in a 0.5 down here and press enter. And now that's exactly lining up. So you got two pieces here. One is an extrude and one is a sweep. Now I'd like to take just a moment to talk about level of detail. Um, I'm going to press the Z key to zoom in in all views so that we can examine this a little bit more closely. In the perspective view, I'm going to press F4 so I can see 
wireframe on shaded or so-called edged faces. Okay, so we're able to see the shaded surface and also see the wires superimposed, which is really helpful. So let's talk about level of detail. These are polygon mesh objects. They're made out of all straight lines. And in fact, there is no true curvature on a polygon object. It's only got an approximation of curvature based upon the number of straight lines. So the goal of a modeler is to use as few number of polygons or edges as possible. So the flat face here is called a polygon and the wireframe line is called an edge. So we don't want to use more polygons or edges than necessary. So how do we control level of detail for these objects? Well, in fact, it's controlled through the original spline curves. If I select the extrude, for example, and I go back down into editable spline parameters, and we can turn on show end results so we can see the effect. I'll scroll back up to the top, and near the top of the modify panel, you'll see a rollout called interpolation. Interpolation means filling in the blanks between known values. So in this case we know where the points are on the curve and interpolation is filling in the detail between the points. So if I increase the number of steps we'll get a higher level of detail and if I reduce the number of steps I'll get less detail or lower level of detail. Something like this with a very high number of steps is too much and this is a, an overly heavy model. So the analogy is this is too heavy and we bring this down then it's much lighter and that's too light. So the default of 6 was actually pretty good here. These options are helpful especially the optimize switch. If I turn that off you can see that the straight area of my extrude is now being subdivided. I've got more lines here. If I turn that back on again then those are removed. Basically we don't need that detail and it's a good idea to have optimized turned on otherwise the model is just going to be too heavy for no reason. There's no curvature in this region here so adding more steps in that area doesn't really bring anything to the party. We won't be able to tell the difference when it's rendered and it'll just be heavier than necessary. Adaptive is going to add as many segments as it thinks you need based upon the degree of curvature but you don't have any control over that so I actually don't recommend that you use it. It's best just to use the number of steps. And In fact this is fine. What we had to begin with was okay so there isn't any real need for me to change it currently. But I just wanted to show you where it was so that you could have control over it. The same thing for the sweep object. I can go into editable spline and go to let's turn on show end result and I can increase or decrease the interpolation settings. Set that back to 6. Okay, so we're in a good place now to save once again. So I'll go back up to my application menu and choose Save As. And 3ds Max has a handy feature, which is if you have a number at the end of your file name, then all you need to do is press this plus sign and you can save out to a new file that has an incremented number. So now if we go and look here, you'll see it says chair02.max.